lasted until 1552. Okay? When, after a long period of debates, etc., even the Pope in the 1530 had to make a, a bulla, I don't know how you say that in English, a statement, you know, forced to make a statement where he didn't solve the problem, okay? Because he basically, he basically his statement was very ambiguous and tried to concede to both sides, you know, <laughs> and so never solved the problem. Finally, the king of Spain, uh, Charles the second or the third, I don't remember, calls for a, a meeting, a, 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 a trial, calls for a trial to decide this question. Are the methods of the conquest okay in the eyes of God, or the, are they a sin in the eyes of God? Now, you remember I said, and you were here in the, video, in the audio when it's uploaded, uh, that the word historical significance of the methods of conquest of al right? Now I'm going to say, look at the word historical significance of this trial. This trial has word historical significance. This is the trial between Gine Sepúlveda and Bartolomé de las Casas. Gine Sepúlveda and Bartolomé. Have you heard this before? Why the British in their educational system never talk about this? Huh? <laughs> ah, this is really very funny. Anyway, uh, they, they don't want to talk about this anyway because it's not good. But anyway, uh, here is the trial. In this trial, they put there, it's, it's called the Controversy of Valladolid. Or it's, it's in the school of Salamanca. At that time, the jurisprudence was in the hands of the church, right? It was not the way today. And so they put two theologians to debate this. Gine Sepulveda and Bartolomé de Casas. Are the methods of the conquer okay in the eyes of God, or are they a sin in the eyes of God? And so in this debate, uh, you have two positions. Sepulveda, okay, Sepulveda will be saying, well, uh, it's okay, the methods we're using, because these people are barbarians. And they are uh, like, you know, animal-like, etc. So, he's going to take the side of the people who are sustaining the idea that these are people without a soul. Right? People without a soul. Therefore, they are animal-like, and therefore there's no reason to be discussing this. This is irrelevant. It's like discussing we can put a horse to, to, in the labor process. Or a cow. I see, it's, it's a stupid debate. Here comes Las Casas, and Las Casas was saying, well, I think you're wrong. I think these people are human beings, they have a soul, but they're just in a barbarian stage. And what we need to do is Christianize them. So we need to Christianize them. So here you have the two discourses that are going to be in, going to have a word historical significance. Because the last, the Sepulveda line, when the authority of knowledge shifts from the church to the new church called scientificism in the 19th century, okay, the pseudo-scientific project of 19th century, in the natural science and biology, the People without soul is going to be secularized into people without the human DNA. It's the same dog with a different, uh, how do you say that, uh, color. color. The same dog with a different color. That is the same racist discord, but now under a uh, scientific language. In the 16th century with a, with a, with a theological language, in the 19th century with a scientific language. So racism did not begin with scientific racism in, in, in the 19th century. It began way back. Okay? So look at the war historical significance of this trial. So here you have now the secularization from people without soul in a theological language in the 16th century to people without the human DNA with a scientific or pseudo-scientific language in natural science, especially biology, now in the 19th century. So here is the, the Sepulveda line, okay? And today we call that how? Biological racist discourses, right? In the literature, that's how we name it. That's the Sepulveda line. Here comes the Las Casas line. The Las Casas line turned from 
barbarians to be Christianized in the 16th century. Now, with the new pseudo-scientific social science, especially anthropology, they're going to talk about, or they're going to secularize the language of las casas into primitive to be civilized. From barbarians to be Christianized in the 16th century to primitive to be civilized. It's the same dog with a different color. Okay? And it's just that the authority of knowledge shifted, and now they're using, same, doing and saying the same thing with the language of pseudoscience, you see? Uh, and this is what is happening. Now, theology is not the language, so they shifted to this other language, but it's a secularization of the theological language of the 16th century. That's what is happening. So look at the world historical significance of this trial, okay? In 1552. And look at the consequences of that line that Columbus put in his diary when he arrived October 12, 1492 to the Americas, and the consequence of this, okay? Look at this. It's just amazing, no? So, <clears throat> and then here comes uh, the second world historical significance of this. And that was that in this trial, Las Casas won the trial. So they decide that indigenous people are people with a soul, but they are barbarians to be Christianized, right? So you might imagine that now they're going to take them out of the uh, oppression of colonialism, etc., no? Or quarries forms of labor, etc. Well, what they did was take them out of slavery and put them into another form of coarse labor that is called how? The encomienda. Now they brought the institution of the encomienda from Al Andalus, from the conquest of Al Andalus, now to the Americas. So look at how uh, what happened in Al Andalus have more historical significance. And now, the methods that we're using over there, now they bring it to the Americas. And now they're going to put indigenous people in this form of coerced labor. They, they have to work for free a number of hours a day for the encomendero, okay? For the family who comes and take over, right? So, and then the encomendero, remember, have two tasks. I, I forgot to say that earlier, but I said in the, in the audio of last time. Not only the, the coerced, you know, surveillance of coerced labor, but the surveillance of their conversion. So the commander in Al-Andalus was watching if the Muslim were that claimed to have been converted, they were really converted, if they were not faking conversion. Or that the Jews that were converted, they were not faking conversion, right? So they, they, they were surveilling this. And so that's exactly the task he's going to do in America with indigenous people. Barbarians to be Christian. So I want to make sure these people are not faking conversion, right? So the encomendero is not only exploiting labor, but also surveying con conversion. Okay? So the institution of the conquest of Alanda now comes to the Americas. Okay? Uh, that I mentioned already, we, it has a name, cellular colonialism. We call this today, today cellular colonialism. So, and then the other thing that happened is that they burned the libraries. The Mayas, for example, or the, or the Aztecs, they have codices. That was the, 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 the library, the archival of knowledge. And these were very advanced civilizations in terms of science, in terms of technology, all kind of stuff, okay? For example, Mayas had the most precise calendar in the world at the time, with a capacity of prediction of solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, and a hemispheric, hemis, hemispheric phenomenon atmospheric phenomenon, it was amazing, okay? And, but we don't know how they got to that knowledge because they burned the codices, okay? And when they burned the codices, we lost, we lost information of how they, they got there, okay? And the same with many other things, surgery, uh, all kinds of stuff that was happening in America. They were doing surgery, they were doing brain surgery, there were all kinds of stuff that, that you could find in America at the time that for Europe at the time was unknown, okay? So, but we lost a lot of information because they were doing not only genocide, but epistemicide, right? We were, I was mentioning that in Al-Andalus they were burning the libraries, right? Well, they did the same thing over there. They burned the libraries. And also the quipus in the, in the case of South America in the US civilization, they, they had their archival kind of knowledge in quipus and they also burned them, okay? So anyway, the, this genocide epistemicide, Okay, was 
ongoing, okay? So they took the metals of Al-Andalus and brought them to the Americas, okay? Now, the descendants of the Muslim and Jews, okay, that second, third, fourth generation in the 16th century, that were conquered in the 15th century, in, a, in Andalusia, right, now living in the south of Spain, that were, you know, of course, now they're born Christians, they are Christians, etc., because after three generations, they're already uh, uh, assimilated to Christian law. Now there's going to be a very important transformation. Because I mentioned the methods of conquest from Al Andalus were going to the Americas, right? But we have to see also what emerged new in the Americas that is going to come back to the conquest of Andalusia. And what emerged new was this concept of people with soul and people without a soul. 